Faith invites us to praise God as well. Let us do that now with our opening hymn. I invite you to join your hearts and voices. Great is thy faith.
in our prayer today as you find it printed on our top of us. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time, I invite the congregation to be seated. We turn now to our scripture readings for today. The first lesson is from Joel, chapter 2, verses 21 to 27. Land, do not be afraid. Be glad and rejoice. The Lord has done great things. Wild animals, do not be afraid. The pastures in the wilderness have turned green. The trees have produced their fruit. There are plenty of figs and grapes. People of Zion, be glad and find joy in the Lord your God. The Lord has given you the teacher of righteousness. He has sent the autumn rain and the spring rain as before. The thrashing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and olive oil. Then I will repay you for the years that the mature locusts, the adult locusts, the grasshoppers, and the young locusts ate your crops. They are the large army that I sent against you. You will have plenty to eat and you will, be, you will be full. You will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has performed miracles for you. My people will never be ashamed again. You will know that I am in Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people will never be ashamed again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from 1 Timothy Chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. First of all, I encourage you to make petitions, prayers, intercessions, and prayers of thanks for all people, for rulers, and for everyone who has authority over us. Pray for these people so that they, we can have a quiet and peaceful life, always lived in a godly and reverent way. This is good and pleases God our Savior. He wants all people to be saved and to learn the truth. There is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humans, a human, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for all people to free them from their sins. This message is valid for every era. I was appointed to spread this good news and will be an apostle to teach people who are not Jewish about faith and truth. I'm telling you the truth. I am not. I am not lying. The word of the Lord. Okay. Thank you, God. Amen. We will continue to give our heart and our attention to God's word and join our voices together in it. On a Thanksgiving day, it is uh, right and appropriate that much of our imagery and much of uh, our language will focus around harvest. This is a harvest song that we join in today, uh, Psalm 126, and we, we give thanks for the harvest, not only grown in the fields, but also that uh, grows in our hearts as we come to the Savior that Paul referred to there, right? The one in whom we have forgiveness of our sins and a life everlasting. That is the harvest that is growing within us even now. And so may we be blessed as we join together in Psalm 126. Let us join our voices. When the Lord restored our fortunes to Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our home was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Nega. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheep. Here ends the song. <laughs> this time, I would invite anybody who wants to come up to the front to come on down. Take me a second. 
second to bring all my stuff over. So if you guys want to find a place to sit there, good one.
Jesus said to them, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body and what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of those. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow thrown into the oven, will God not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Rather, strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I heard a little story about a very, very elderly woman, 105 years old. Can you imagine making it to 105? She was 105 and actually still pretty vibrant, still in pretty good health, not doing too bad. Uh, and as she was celebrating this big, big birthday, her family and, and, and uh, you know all the generations that were a part of that family were gathered there and they were all very excited. And they were asking her, how are you feeling? How are you doing? We're going to have a big celebration coming up real quick. Are you, are you all excited about it? And she said, no. I'm worried sick. They're like, what? Really? You made it to 105. I, what have you got to worry about? Now, aren't they taking good care of you here at the home? And aren't things pretty good? She said, yeah, they're doing a great job of taking care of me. Food's good and all that stuff. But I'm, I'm just absolutely worried sick. They said, well, what about? She said, well, you know, all my really close friends have died long ago. And they've all gone off into heaven. And I'm sure they must all be wondering by now whether I went the other direction. <laughs> Everybody finds something to worry about, I guess. doesn't matter if you make it to 105, 115, I don't know, whatever. I think worry is a part of our life, isn't it? Anybody here ever get through it? Get through a whole day, maybe, without worrying about something? Hopefully, you maybe get through a day, but you won't get through life, I'm sorry to say, without worrying about something. Right? We're in the midst of elections, and people are worried about who's going to get elected. People are worried about our economy. People are worried about war. Refugees, people are worried about climate, weather. Maybe you're not that deep. Maybe you're worried about the Blue Jays. How are they going to do? Are they going to be able to win three straight? Or, or you're a little more local and you're worried like me. Are the Riders going to be able to come up with a really good pass defense by next season? Right? We worry. We can't help ourselves. We, we get bound up about these kind of things. And, and, and you know, the church is a place where we should be able to come to to find, I hope, some level of security, grace, a, a sense of strength, Courage and hope, all these things that combat worry. Church doesn't always do that as well as we would like. I know that. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with a, a marquee sign that was once put out there, and I think we made it into bulletins one time and said, Don't let worry and anxiety kill you off. Let the church help. <laughs> think about it, right? Sometimes the church adds to our worries, and that really should not be the case. Uh, but hopefully, there is. Uh, this kernel of hope as we come into this place that we hear it when we lift those songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. We know that God is God. God is great. God is good. God is with us. God is for us. All these wonderful words that should lift us, that should develop thanksgiving in us. And I think a thankful life does combat worry. And we start to recognize that God is with us and for us. It does develop this sense that we have reason to be thankful. If you read the Bible, and let me tell you, I really encourage you, read the Bible. Don't just come to this place as the only place you're ever going to hear Scripture read. Try to develop that as a discipline. Try to make it a part of your life to read Scripture or get a devotional booklet that will help you to get into the Word a little bit. But if you read the Bible, you will hear again and again and again promises from God. 
And one of the things that the Bible seems to say again and again and again is, do not be afraid. Do not fear. For I am by your side. Or, or just a whole panoply of other promises that state God's present with us. And I'll give you a little homework maybe for this week as you go from this place. Um, I know that within our congregation we have a lot of people who love creation, who seek God present in creation in so very many ways. And, and some of you farmers maybe see that all the time. Can I tell you a little joke? Can I just do a little side here? All right. I, I heard this wonderful joke and I was thinking, how am I going to get this into the sermon? I'm just going to do it. Uh, I heard about a farmer who won $10 million and all his neighbors said, that's fantastic, $10 million, what are you going to do with that? And the farmer said, wow, I guess I'll just keep farming until it's all gone. <laughs> right? I'm thankful you can laugh at that maybe later with the boots people, whatever. Uh, but we have much to be thankful for. And, 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 and as you go from this place, if, if creation is something that speaks to you, go online or go to the, the library and find books that, that show you pictures from the Hubble telescope. This is this massive telescope that's out there taking pictures of deep space and showing just amazing things. And that is God's handiwork. You know, I live in the city, and I think guys out in the country maybe get a little bit more. We look up at night, and we can see a few little stars twinkling here and there. We don't get a sense of the vastness of what God has made. This universe that is God's handiwork, and that God continues to be present in throughout, and yet still loves each and every one of us. But this is our God. Who can say, who cares about this little backwater planet off in the middle, you know, the edges of the Milky Way galaxy, which is just one of a billion galaxies. But God says, no, that is also my creation. And I love it so deeply. I will come in the person of Jesus Christ to reconcile it to me, you, to God. That is the depths of God's love. And when we enter into that, I do hope that that begins to lift us up out of worry and anxiety. God has overcome it. God has taken care of it. God will help you through the midst of that worry. Trust that. And then, I hope, once we begin to know that God is with us and God is for us, it begins to move us into that thanksgiving in prayer. And I don't know if you are good people of prayer. I, I know that so many of you are deeply and, and invest yourself in prayer each and every day. And I encourage you to keep being people of prayer. Pray for our congregation. Pray for us as we go through times that may cause us to worry. Right? We're going through some, some transitions and some changes. We're, we're going to knock a building down. And what is that going to mean for us in the future of our congregation? Well, lift that up in prayer. Commit it to God. Say, I'm worried about that, Lord, but I know that you can provide. And you'll show the way. Open our eyes. And keep lifting that up. Pray for one another. Pray for your families. Pray for this world. Pray for our leaders. Paul told us to do that. Boy, talk about prayer. And if you're not sure about what to pray for, keep it simple. I heard about a little three-year-old who was being asked to pray. And, and it was a Thanksgiving, and people were like, well, what can a three-year-old really know about prayer? But this little, little three-year-old lifted up this prayer and said, Dear God, thank you for that lady who gave me chocolate the other day. Thank you for ice cream. Thank you for candy. And thank you for band-aids. Oh, man. What does that have to do with anything? Maybe a little too sugar-based, I'm not sure, but the parents better think about what they're feeding that kid, but it's simple. Straightforward, and it's the things that speaks to that child's heart. What brings joy? Thank you, God, for these things. May we find joy in one another. May we find joy in our worship, being in the very presence of God. May that help us to be people of thanksgiving. And may we, from time to time, stop and take a good hard look at our own lives. I heard about a business owner who hired a young person. This is back in the day before there were you know, strip malls and everybody had part-time jobs. This person had come off the farm and was looking to find a, a job at the general store and was working hard, you know, cleaning up after every day and stocking the shelves and doing all these things for quite a number of months until one day the owner said to him, today we need to do inventory. This was not a term this person had ever heard before. And so it was like, okay, what's inventory? The owner said, well, in the comings and goings of daily life and daily work and, and daily having this store open, things come into the store and things go out of the store and we don't always know what we got. So every now and then we got to stop and count it all. It's coming week. Do inventory in your life. Go through it. What have you to be thankful for? And you know, I know it's going to be a lot of maybe possessions and health and all those kind of things. Even find a way to give thanks for challenges that you have in your life. That is an opportunity to grow in your trust in God. You may grow deeper.
closer to Him and to give thanks for being able to meet those challenges together with God. Now, I'm not going to ask you to come forward next week and say, here's my inventory, but I do really encourage you to, to take time, not just at Thanksgiving, regularly, to look at your life, to lift it up to God and say, God, you are the one who has given me this as a gift, and you have given me much within it. Help me to use it to your glory and to your praise. May God make that so. We rise, we lift our praises to God as we sing to the one who is the Lord of harvest. May our hearts be filled with thanksgiving and praise. Let us join together in our hymn of the day.
time to our all students, so let us now continue to worship God and glorify God through the collection of our offerings. Walk close with them, bearing your spirit and the promises you have given. 
We continue to lift to you the nation of Burundi. We pray that you would guide the leaders and the people of that country that they would turn away from war and bloodshed and find ways to build peace and security together. We give you thanks for Cam and Catherine joined in, in marriage yesterday. We pray that you would continue to bless their life together. May they always find joy in each other and have reason for thanksgiving. And for Scott and Janice as they prepare for their marriage too. We pray that same blessing. For all who travel this holiday weekend, Lord, we pray safe journeys, a uh, blessed and enjoyable time together with friends and family, and a safe return home once again. Bountiful God, you crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. As we come to you this day and every day in thanksgiving, we pray that you would receive our grateful hearts and continue to pour your abundant grace upon us. And these things we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With the congregation, please rise with great thanks to you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection he has opened to us the way that leads to everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take it deep, all of you. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup. Gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gift of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come, for all is ready. I invite the congregation to be seated. I will give just a quick word of instruction as we have visitors amongst us today. First of all, welcome. All are welcome to come to the Savior's table. He is the host, and he invites you to come and receive. We will go half by half, so this side will begin. We invite you to come forward. The first individual will dispense the bread. The second individual will have a tray. You will find grape juice pre-poured. If you prefer grape juice, please take one of those pre-poured glasses. Otherwise, take an empty glass, and the third person will uh, dispense the wine to you, and then you can take your empty glass and put it in the container, and then we will do this side. Come, the Lord back.
Thank you. 